Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 10 of the Startup Sessions, the number one show for starting a business that matters by doing work you love. I'm Michael Naus, and today I'm speaking with Katie Kelly of Katie Kelly Networks. And this episode is so completely packed with information that you've really just got to listen to it to appreciate it. I'll say this, if I were teaching a class on how to succeed as an entrepreneur and as a leader, this episode would be required listening. It's just that good. So Katie is a self-made entrepreneur. She's a wife, a mom, a highly sought after leadership development expert and an inspirational speaker. And she's going to challenge you about what it takes to succeed as an entrepreneur and become a leader who has all parts of life working really well together. And most importantly, Katie's going to discuss those important steps to succeed at starting your own business and how to effectively deal with the risk that comes along with that. So if you're wondering if it's possible to change careers, raise a family, and even move across the country to become a successful entrepreneur, then listen up. It's all coming to you right now on episode number 10 of The Startup Sessions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Startup Sessions. I'm Michael Naus, and today you're all in for a great big treat. I am joined today um, with Katie Kelly of Katie Kelly Networks, and I'm really super excited to have her on the show for a couple of reasons. One, she's launching an amazing new program, and so she's going to talk about that here with us today. It's powerful, and um, for those of you that resonate with her message, I completely encourage you to like go check her stuff out because it's amazing. I've checked it out. It's incredible. So um, welcome, Katie. Thank you so much, Michael. Such an honor to be here. Hi, Abs- everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Hello. so here, here's the deal. Um, Katie is a self-made entrepreneur. She's a mom of two daughters. She's a yes. wife. Um, she's a highly sought after leadership development expert. She's an inspirational speaker. Uh, Some of her clients include companies like Google and Kaiser Permanente. So Katie's the real deal. She's established in her expertise and what she does. Um, Now, since 2011, Katie's also been a contributor to a a show that's local here to the Portland market called uh, AM Northwest. So if she looks familiar... Maybe right. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> if you were on your couch at 9 a.m., you might have seen me <laughs> watching television. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so as I mentioned, too, Katie's um, in the process of launching her new program called um, uh, Katie Kelly Network's Leadership Academy. And she's going to be teaching an online series called uh, Critical Lessons for Leaders Who Want It All. And she's going to give you a chance to participate in that a little bit later today uh, with an offer. So, um, Katie, I think the first thing is I want to have you talk a little bit about your background and your story because, um, you know, you're a successful entrepreneur and for everyone that has ambitions to do that, there's a story, there's a path and nobody's path is the same. It's not just a straight line. And you've got as many people do, an amazing, interesting story with lots of twists and turns. And I just want to give you to uh, give you a chance to let people see how you've, you know, got to where you are now today. Yeah, so, thanks, so share a little bit with you. us. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. And, you know, I appreciate this question even more so at the beginning, because I really believe in telling the truth and being really honest. Um, there's a lot of posturing and, um, non-truth telling for for lack of a better word by entrepreneurs sometimes because you know I mean for all of us it's like you know it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors especially at the beginning I mean you need to kind of keep your your hand cards close to your breast Um, but I I really believe in responsible entrepreneurial coaching so I'm happy to share my story Um, uh, and even just hearing you Taught me at this early, you know, stage of the show. I mean, I, I have a long way to go, and um, I, I certainly look up to people like you and others, and uh, and have a long journey ahead of me. But um, I get real short answer is um, started off my background. I studied psychology in undergraduate, and from the age of 16 until 30, 
never looked left or right, really believed in my heart. I wanted to become a psychotherapist and I wanted to go to the best school possible and practice with um, kind of the most challenging environment. So I got my master's at Smith College and then moved to New York City and worked on the Locke Psychiatric Ward in Manhattan um, for three years and, and kind of completed my goal, turned 30 and had, had accomplished all I ever wanted to professionally. Here I was ready to make the leap into either private practice or, or something like that, and I was completely fried. Um, so I think this this is really important to share because a lot of people, even if it's if it's an entrepreneurial dream, and then they go after it, and they realize even two months, two years in, you know what? This is completely not what I thought it was going to be. It's okay to to take a turn, a pivot. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He, th thank you. So. For um, so yeah, I mean, just in following, so I, I, I jumped out of um, my entire trade and went into pharmaceutical sales um, in Manhattan and actually completely loved it. I love the total unique challenges that it, it provided after being stuck in a hospital for so long, literally. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the physicians I called on said to me, Katie, you're essentially business coaching us. You're helping us differentiate from the 12 other physicians on this block mm -hmm. for how to kind of pivot our business. So that was kind of the first seedling I've got of thought and thinking about a business coach. And yeah. then um, I basically stuck them together, kind of my clinical training with business and thus become my path five years ago to a business coach, leadership coach now. Okay. I think that's interesting and important to point out that, you know, yeah. a lot of times um, finding our path, whether that's entrepreneurial or otherwise, right. isn't something that we create. It's something that we're already doing. And so it's sure. just paying attention to what people are telling us or, or, or what, what we're really, really good at and taking that yeah. and molding it to, uh, you know, be something of our own. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the important themes that I know we're going to talk about today is just um, being flexible with ourselves and really honest with ourselves. If something's working or it's not working, you know, whether it's for our bank account, it's not working, <laughs> whether for our family or whether for ourselves. Like, yeah. I know a lot of people who go after running their own business and then they realize, oh my God, this is really isolating. Like, I hate yeah. this. I yeah. hate closing on business. I hate like wearing all the hats. And it's like, yeah. you know, you have two options either like, you know, bring in the right support, um, get what you need to, to get done, um, and stick with what you're doing or, or bail out, you know? Yeah. Yes. And there's yeah. no shame in either. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's huge. It's so important. I think a lot of people, um, you know, try to make things work that just, you know, it's not a natural way for things to work for you. It's yeah. not right or wrong. Yeah. It just, it just is. And so yeah. finding a spot that's, um, a, a, a place where you can excel and really be yeah. an expert and shine and you you're having yep. fun for god's sakes right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i mean i think that's kind of the one of the early challenges um i really struggle with was um to niche or not to niche right mm -hmm. so everywhere yeah. i went as a young entrepreneur everyone says oh you got a niche i mean you can't just be you know something for everybody you got to have yeah. a specialty well, my feeling was that's the reason i started a business because i wanted to have this wide berth of mm -hmm. kind of services and kind of flexibility in what I did. I was bored stiff working in a corporate environment, having the same monotonous role each day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but over time, I realized it was really unsatisfying trying to be everything for everybody, all kinds yeah. of clients. Yeah. And it's actually very rich to be able to specialize in something and just attract a specific group of people. Mm -hmm. But it takes time to get there. And so I just encourage people to be patient with what that process looks for. You can't speed it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to make sure I'm hearing what you're saying. And sure. that is that, that you started serving a wider group of people initially. And then right. as things came together, you got yep. more specialized. Yep. And that happened in a, in a pretty, I mean, intentional, but organic way. Yeah, I mean, I credit my um, a business partner and, and a woman who really has apprenticed me and mentored me through the years here in Portland, Cindy Tortorici, and she guided me a lot. Um, a lot of times through the vein of Simon Sinek's Simple Model from mm -hmm. Start With Why, which is a great book I recommend for everybody. Okay, great. Um, and it, it, it's really just getting this simple kind of three concentric circles. When people typically ask you what you do in your business or, or your career, people talk about the what and the how. Mm -hmm. And so Simon encourages people to get in touch with the why of what they do, what their real internal drive is. Mm, it yeah. takes some time to do that, but 
if people can get to what their real internal drive is in, in the kind of the facet of their work, then that helps build trust with those around us. Mm, I love that. And I've seen a little of Simon's work, but I have not read that book and I plan to uh, this coming year. So thanks for that recommendation. Sure. Yeah. And truth be told, I've never read the book. <laughs> uh-huh. I teach it in all my seminars. It's a, if you just Google the model and yeah. kind of watch him on YouTube, I don't, yeah. I don't even know if you have to read the book, but may all kudos to him. It's all his stuff. He's, he's the <laughs> okay. real deal. Shortcuts. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> no more book sales for Simon. <laughs> Sorry. I think he's doing just fine. <laughs> just all right. Fine. All right. So, um, so we've got a glimpse of, of, your your path to entrepreneurship. Sure. Well, a lot of the people that that I talk with every single week, and and I would imagine a lot of the listeners on this show um, are frustrated corporate employees. They want to start their own business. They want to go after their dreams. They want to be out of the boring corporate job and kind yep. of call in their own shots. Um, from your experience. What would you say to someone that's in that position? Yes, go for your dreams, but do mm-hmm. it slowly and responsibly and okay. thoughtfully. Okay. So you never want to pull the ripcord. I think a problem I see a lot is people sit on their dreams for a long time for mm-hmm. very legitimate reasons, right? It's not like we operate in a silo. We all have very real factors weighing into our day-to-day you know, living, right? Yep. Like family, responsibility, mortgage, yada, yada. So yep. um, really getting honest and real about what that looks like as far as like what your kind of budget is, what you need to stick with. Because yep. my advice is to find an opportunity to be apprenticed, to come under somebody's wing, um, whether this means like, you know, devoting Saturday afternoons to um, spending some time with a mentor or somebody like this, whether it means taking, um, like uh, my last job, I was doing my certification to become a coach during my lunch hour. And like, I would wake up at 6am and the classes were over the phone. Mm -hmm. So kind of building in like, what kind of training do I need? How can I start to, um, you know, gain that while I'm under this comfortable financial situation? Uh Um, also looking for opportunities at your current work to expand your skill set so that you're positioning yourself for your departure or for your next role. Okay. Um, also not um, undervaluing the potential opportunities within your organization to kind of take a step up. Like, mm-hmm. for example, maybe like your financial acumen is like pretty weak or your strategy planning. And that's going to be something critical for when you do take the leap. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe you can, you know, serve on a board or maybe you can sign up for a particular committee that's completely out of your comfort zone, but you feel like, you know, so just really taking stock of like, what do I need to do to get like all my ducks in a row? Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but um I, I, I just, I never encourage people to just like, yep, go crazy, quit your job and like start your business tomorrow. Like that's going to yeah. work out really well. No, <laughs> that, that's it, no, most I'm op- not that coach. Yeah. And it, I'm glad you, I'm so happy you, you're talking on the subject because there are a few stories. There are the, like hero stories out there that get propagated of, of pe- people that happen. There's and that's outliers. why. Yeah, or, that's the outliers. The glory. Exactly. The glory. Yeah, and that's yeah. why you hear the stories because they're outliers, yeah. right? 99% right. of the time, I think it's a recipe for disaster. Um, yeah. So your advice is, is like, from my perspective, your advice is spot on and I highly recommend it. Um, I think that's, I, I would refer to that as start experimenting responsibly. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. And especially using your job and, you know, using your entrepreneurial skills while you're still in your job. That's like amazing, wonderful yeah. advice. Perfect. I love it. Um, I mean, the second thing I would say is just to follow up is have um, some really honest conversations with people who are currently doing what you want to do and ask them for the straight up truth. Like, what is it really like to do this? Um, Financially, what should I expect? Um, it gets touchy when you ask people like, what do you charge? You never want to say, what are you making? Like, you know, Cause that's just, I mean, I grew up in a house where that's rude. Some mm-hmm. people do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So you, you just want to get really clear on what you're headed into. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, I felt like I was sold a really um, 
bad bill of goods from my coaching school. They said, oh, you'll, no problem, piece of cake, you'll get clients like this, you charge them this, you'll get like, and it was a bunch of bunk, I thought. Yeah. It didn't net out for me. Yeah. So, um, so I think if I had talked to coaches and said, where I live, what are you making approximately? What's an, what's an hourly rate? What does that look like? So mm -hmm. okay. to kind of piece that together with the getting more experience. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, and that's another just invaluable step for people to take um, in, in terms of like go really find out, you know, do yeah. the, spend the time, do, do right. some of the research. Uh, if, yeah. it's, if it's that important to you, then do the research. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So one thing I wanted to hit on with you, um, because you, you've got a lot on your plate. Um, you've got a family, you've got children, you've mm -hmm. got a husband, you've got your business and, you know, entrepreneurs are busier than most people, I think. So, you know, I'll, I get asked this question a lot, you know, how do you balance all this stuff, running your own business yeah. and family and all that stuff? It's a big concern that people have. What would right. you, any, any tidbits, any like advice that you would give around that? Yeah. I mean, it's it, being an entrepreneur is a family affair and your mm -hmm. family could be your dog. It could be your sister you live with. It could be your girlfriend. I mean, it doesn't have to mean, you know, a mate and a, a couple of kids. Um, but it's really important to um, really amp up your support system. It's not yeah. all about you. It's not all about your business. It's a give and take. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you and I met, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling you about the role my husband Tom plays for me. I mean, yeah. there's the only way this works is because of he, what the yang he brings to my yang. You okay. know, we are, yep. it is truly, it is a family business. I mean, yeah. he's the one who brings the kids early to daycare when mommy's on TV or helps pitch in when I've got a really early morning call, you know, so it's, it's a family affair. And mm -hmm. so I just, I think that's something you need to think about if you want to become an entrepreneur. How am I going to surround myself so that I don't suffer from that isolation that all of us do? Yes. Um, not only on a peer and mentor wise, but also, you know, outside of my job. Um, how am I going to stay nourished and not have it always be about the business? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so easy to just get wrapped up into, you know, the thing that you love and care about so much and trying to make it work. <laughs> a lot of times, yeah. it's easy for, for um, things like exercise and eating healthy and yeah. other f like family members to get excluded right. at, at the at the price of you know what what seems to be I, I need to get this th I need to spend all my time and energy here when actually it's kind of it's many times the reverse of that you you need to have that balance of 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 you know doing things that are good for yourself in order to uh, thrive in your business. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, you need to take care of yourself because you yeah. need to like make sure you're nourishing yourself because so much of, you know, the early years are just giving, giving, giving everything you have. Yeah. I mean, the overall um, kind of, you know, evolution of a small business, I think for me, at least it's been, you know, I've been writing a book. Now the book's, you know, going to be published in a year or so, but I've been, I've really spent a lot of unpaid time developing mm -hmm. my messaging, developing my beliefs, um, kind of curating all this information in a way that's meaningful to me and my clients. So that's mm -hmm. great, but that's a ton of time I have not been making money. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been running my business alongside it, but um, in comparison to somebody who didn't write a book and was operating a business similar to mine. So yeah. now, um, you know, my goal in the next year or two is to take all this information and start teaching online, which we'll talk about later in the show. But yeah. that's just an example of, you know, hopefully all that I've invested in for my business, for myself, for my clients will begin to pay off and give me more freedom as I evolve further, right? Uh -huh. So yes. I guess what I'm saying is in, in relation to your original question is, you got to make the commitment that the first, I think, three to five years of being a, your own business owner is is intense. And so yeah. when people contact me and say, um, you know, I'm about to have a kid or I'm going through a divorce or, you know, some major milestone. And I, I, I think this is a time to take the entrepreneurial plunge. And I'm like, <laughs> no, don't do it now. <laughs> it's just you, you, I know you're like revved up to make a shift in your life because you're mm -hmm. feeling like there's room or you're not feeling great about a part of your life or vice versa. But I say just start the planning now and start yeah. the action in maybe a year and a half, two years. And yeah. people actually tell me they feel relieved. They feel like I've like given them permission to not make the leap now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing negative that's going to come from 
moving a little bit slower in your right. planning. Yeah, so. that's a great point. <laughs> it is. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm so glad you you brought that up. Yeah, um, because it's it takes a it take you know my experience is it takes a tremendous amount of energy to yeah. to launch something, yeah. and it also takes just a, a lot of time to balance, um, yeah. you know, growing your client base and an audience, and right. at the same time exactly. creating content. It just right. does. It so does. I know. It has to be a. It has to be the right. Put the odds in your favor. <laughs> and right. Exactly. Make it a time where you can prioritize yeah. that and let everyone right. around you know that that's a priority for you for yeah. probably at least a couple of years. Right. And and if you have a special someone in your life, make sure you're going out of their way to acknowledge them and do something special for them because you know there's always going to be times where you have to lean on them and say like, I'd love to hang out with you tonight, but I've got to get down to my office and do billing yeah. or, you know, whatever so that mm -hmm. you have that kind of reserve. But yeah. I mean, undoubtedly, you know, the biggest challenge oftentimes is, you know, just having space in your life not to be on, not to mm -hmm. be um, kind of the spouse, the business owner, the, you know, whatever yeah. hats you wear. Yes. Um, and then that's why it, it does take a special type of person, maybe special is not, not the best word. That sounds like very egotistical, but uh, it's a unique type of person who really can, can go the distance mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. I mm -hmm. truly believe. Okay. And, and you, you don't know what that looks like. You got to give it a go and figure it out for yourself yeah. if that's you or not. Yeah. And the only, yeah, but, and, and that kind of to me ties back into what you talked about with experimenting and exploring. I mean, because yeah. you can dip your toe in pretty far by starting something on the side and figure yeah. out if that's really like would I want to do this all the time? Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, you know. So testing is really can can really be, gosh, one of the most important things that you know. It sounds like you recommend. I recommend right. it. You know, starting a meaningful project on the side and seeing how it goes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, when I remember an initial coach asked me when I was just getting started and trying to figure out kind of which direction to go, you know, she said, Katie, what is it that you want to do that you will burn the bit midnight oil for, mm, you know, I love like, that. and what do you, what are you going to do if without getting paid? Yeah. Because I mean, I, I would say the first couple of years, I mean, I was charging like a nominal amount mm -hmm. um, for my coaching. I mean, I don't even want to admit the amount, but like, I just wanted the experience. Yeah. Um, it's not that I didn't believe in myself and my value. Maybe I didn't actually, I don't know. I was just trying to figure it out. I had sea legs. And yeah. so, um, it, it, you know, it takes some time. Yeah. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Great. Thank you for uh, that more sage advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we talked, we, sorry, one last thing is just, yeah. we talked about, you know, people say, how do you do it all? And I say, well, I, you know, for one, moving from Manhattan to Portland made it a lot <laughs> easier in yes. the bank account department. <laughs> so yeah. I think, you know, I know, I don't mean to be flippant that everyone, it's so easy to all of a sudden pick up your life and relocate, Yep. but it is kind of one of those concrete things that I feel like I don't hear talked about enough is mm -hmm. that you got to give to get. And so if this is a shift you want to make in your life, mm -hmm. you've got to give up the something, whether mm -hmm. that's like we talked about going out to restaurants every week or not wearing luxury brands mm -hmm. or moving out of major metropolitan cities where you have all of it is where can you get more financial freedom and yeah. where can you have room to think? I remember yeah. living in New York in my one bedroom apartment, living paycheck to paycheck and just knowing I wasn't truly on the right career path, but I would, there was so much stimuli and so much distractions going on in that environment. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't think I would try to journal. I would try to, you know, verbalize it and I couldn't. And then once I moved to Portland, you know, I, I just, it became very clear to me pretty quickly once I really put my foot out there, okay, this is natural for me. This yeah. is so much more aligned with who I am. Yes. I promise everyone this is not a move to Portland campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's a great place to live. <laughs> it's a great place, especially to be an entrepreneur. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago and I'm so glad that you brought this back up because this is an area that you know, people don't talk about. People don't talk about the sacrifices that that can actually improve the odds of you succeeding and 
yeah. make your life more enjoyable. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, I mean, our culture, it's just the way it is. You know, we're constantly bombarded with, you know, if you, if you live here or you buy this or if you take these kinds of vacations, your life's going to feel better and look better and all that stuff. And it's, right. you know, it's just not, especially when you're trying to start something meaningful, that's just yeah. not the case. So, so right. I love what you said about, you know, m- making some conscious decisions in your case yeah. to have yeah. a family, a house and have everything <laughs> work. You made a decision with your husband to move from New York right. City to Portland. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's just a whole interesting topic to me because, you know, th- to me that that says, okay, you guys, number one, you talked about it, you and your husband, and you made a collective decision that was in support of your success collectively, but also for you as an entrepreneur. Again, stacking yeah. the odds in your favor, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, life is getting harder and harder. It's a cruel world out there. And um, I just, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore New York City. I spent a lot of time in Boston. I love that town. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not that I'm saying down with those cities. I mean, they're there. I think they're a fabulous place, especially to spend your 20s, early 30s. For me, in my experience, you know, I I didn't come from there. I didn't have a family tie there, if you will. My husband's from Boulder. I'm mostly from Southern California, but moved around quite a bit. Um, So for us, we knew we wanted to get back home, Mm -hmm. but we knew going to like the standard shift to like, say, San Francisco, it's like, well, that's more the same. We're going to be bound. We're going to live in like a tiny little apartment, you know, and I won't have that freedom that I know I need to make this evolution possible. Yeah. Um, And that kind of ties into the stuff we were going to talk about with risk. You know, it's like, you know, so... We can cut. <laughs> I'll let you tee that up. <laughs> yeah, no. It's hard Perfect. for me not to be the showrunner. Show. <laughs> Stand down, Katie. This is my show. I am the guest. <laughs> guest. Okay. Just kidding. No, that's I you're right. To- that's a perfect segue into um, risk. So, so one of the things that you're I'm going to have you talk about at, in more extensively towards the end of the show is your your new program, um, Critical Lessons for Leaders Who Want It All. And I've asked you to, to speak about a component of that program, yeah. which is risk-taking and the entrepreneurial mindset. And many people, I think, view entrepreneurs as these wild risk-takers. Um, right. You know, and I think that's a big misconception that, number one, prevents many people from even yeah. like trying out entrepreneurship. But right. also, as we've been talking about, you know, just finding that balance of risk and reward and what works for right. you and what doesn't work for you. So... Um, Talk to us a little bit about that, about, you know, risk taking and that whole, that mindset. Sure. I mean, I, you know, it, this theme became really prevalent for me in the first few years of running my business when I was mostly working with um, women entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And I, and then I would, and then I work with some men and I, I noticed a pretty big gender divide. I, I, I'm not into the binary gender divide. I think, you know, we're, we're becoming more and more like, um, and as our uh, as our society is evolving and times are changing, um, but I, uh, but there is definitely you know you had to, you have to have that risk component built into you if you want to run a business. I mean you have to be adept, you have to be quick on your feet. Mm-hmm. If something's not working, I mean you don't want to be changing things, flipping things every day. But after a certain period of time, if you're not attracting clients, if your rates people continually tell you you're too expensive whatever it is, you need to adapt, right? And you need to continue to kind of push the envelope in whatever way. So that's just like a fundamental kind of part of of something I've had to coach a lot of people on. Then I started to shift into working with a lot of new managers in corporate environments, which is Mm -hmm. a a lot of the way my business runs nowadays. And, And I noticed that what employers really want from new managers is to become more entrepreneurial or intrapreneurial, which is essentially just operating with an entrepreneurial mindset within a corporation. But it's like in this day and age, you know, you don't just sit around and wait to be developed. I mean, that's just not going to happen, right? You have to take the onus is on you to go figure out where are my weak spots? What am I not hitting? And where can I go after and, and find that? Um, if it's not going to be me developing myself, who can I bring in? Something we talked about earlier. So um, it's really important mm-hmm. um, to figure it out. 
to figure out yeah. what your baggage is or what your orientation is just to the concept of risk because mm -hmm. risk and failure are two of those like kind of you know flammable words to some in some regards where people have like a kind of guttural reaction to them for yes. better or for worse for oh, some yeah. it's a high for others it's like horrifying you know yeah <laughs> yeah Yes, for a CPA is an accountant, not not to pick yes. on anyone. <laughs> right, it's a it's a Those no are bad go. words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But for thrill seekers and people who are you know through and through extroverts and kind of get highs off of like being in front of an audience or what have you, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a no brainer. It's what you yeah. eat for breakfast. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as it relates to you know someone that wants to to maybe start their own business and do something more meaningful. Um, I guess this could be, like you said, doing something more meaningful within their company. Yeah. How, what, what's your assessment on, you know, risk and the entrepreneurial mindset? Like, is yeah. there, is there something that's optimal there that you've seen for people or what, what's, you know, I think, I, th I guess what, what's really kind of the underlying belly of it is you've got to understand that in order to have this enormous enormous privilege of being able to run a business, which I perceive as a privilege, um, you have to ha take initiative yeah. every single day, yes. right? Like you cannot be like s hitting the snooze button. Um, yeah. You cannot be like going on like these lunches where you have a glass of wine and it goes on and on and on. I mean, you have to be really <laughs> disciplined and, and figure out like what you're going to get done each day. So yeah. you have to be self-driven. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and you have to continue to kind of understand, like peeling back the onion. Mm -hmm. So until you achieve your goals. OK, good. So for some people um, like uh, you definitely I think you can look up the stats, but I would say in my experience, I would say two thirds of the entrepreneurs I work with or around were raised where it wasn't necessarily their primary caregiver, but they were definitely impacted by someone with, with an entrepreneurial drive. Okay. Um, so that was just kind of part of what they were conditioned around in yeah. their early life. Yeah. Um, and then there's a third of people who it's just completely not like something they were privy to, but yeah. it's something that they're open to and, and very much embracing maybe because they saw kind of the stagnation or um, for a lot of people, um, you know, that, that kind of the company man, I mean, where, you know, your father or grandfather worked for the same company for 45 years, that's no longer a reality. Mm -hmm. So for, for those type of people, um, it's, it's a little bit tougher to stomach the risks involved in being out on your own. Yeah. It's, it, well, one of your, um, one of your good friends that was on a show a couple, one of this show a couple weeks ago, Maggie Palmer, she, yeah. one of the things we talked about was she had zero entrepreneurs in her family and she right. did have, you know, I can't remember who in her family, but there were a, a number of people that worked at the same place for like their whole career. And yeah. you're, you're right. That's not, that's not the norm anymore. Um, but w with her, it was, it was interesting because she was kind of like, um, she, she got hit with, you know, some layoffs and things like that, that really yeah. caused her to say, Hey, I want to control my own destiny. I want exactly. to be running the show. So it's always interesting to me, like how yes. the path informs yeah. the entrepreneur. Cause there's always, yeah. you know, whether it's family influence or, you know, a couple of, you know, things that you took some hits yeah. along the way. Sure. There's, there's sure. always something that really drives successful entrepreneurs. Yeah. And it's kind of a cruel process because, um, you know, it, it takes courage to start a business. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first few years are tough. They're really yeah. tough, you know, unless you've got kind of like a slam dunk service that like takes off overnight, which we said rarely happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really like, it will challenge you in ways that you probably haven't been challenged before, but if you can make it through and if you can get up every day and try a little bit harder or a little yeah. bit more differently, um, you will master it. Uh, yeah. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's really, I, the people I've seen who do it the best know it's not personal. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as kind of 
um, helping condition them because Maggie and I came to know each other in when we were both forming our business. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking through her terror with her. <laughs> she was just, ha you know, really just totally disoriented to what this looked like after always being in a corporate job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and look at her. She's now come out and she's like running the marketing world in Portland. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'm so proud of her. So, yeah. um, you just have to, if you can not make it personal, the fact that people say no to you, <laughs> the fact that um, people, you know, end their client relationship with you, it's okay. You know, yeah. as much as you can get feedback and understand why, um, you know, how your services might better fit them, or maybe they weren't the right person anyways, mm -hmm. and continue to adapt and refine your message and your offerings, mm -hmm. this is all going to help you evolve. Yeah. It just takes a certain you know, character of person who can, um, who can withstand that. Yeah. 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 And like, it's, yeah. And like you said too, I think, you know, being willing to make those modifications and those adjustments right. along the way, staying flexible, yeah. you know, right. dedicated, exactly. but flexible. <laughs> right. right. Okay. Very cool. All right. This is a great discussion. I'm loving it. And we could go on <laughs> way, way, way longer than, we have time here for today, but something I want to discuss right now is um, is your your new program that you're just yes. now launching. This is your yes. baby. <laughs> it's a this big is deal. My baby, I'm birthing and my third kid here. <laughs> I want to say that you know your your Katie Kelly Networks Leadership Academy, your online program. I've I've looked at it. I've got it right here, and I've looked at it, and I've looked at a lot of things, and I've been exposed to a lot of online programs. And so for the, the listeners and viewers, my recommendation is that after seeing a lot of stuff out there, this is rock solid. The experience, Katie, that you're bringing and the, um, gosh, just all of who you are and, and studying extensively different leaders and bringing that all into this program, this is just chock full of... <laughs> Just incredible content and great things for people that want to enhance their leadership um, roles, whether it's in their own business or whether it's in life or whether it's in a company that they work for. So, mm. so I guess what I'm saying is I'm like full on behind it because it's it's Thank it's, you so it's much. awesome. But I want Thank you to you. tell um, our listeners and viewers a little sure. bit about the program and yeah. how they can participate in the program. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much. It's so generous of you to say that. Um, so the the content of this program is basically the book I've written over the last three years. And the book publishing process is so excruciatingly, painfully drawn out. <laughs> yeah, um, it's unbelievable. I finally asked my agent like two weeks ago, what is a projected like this book will hit the shelf date. And he told me like mid to late 2015 and I almost fell off the chair. Whoa. So in order to bring this content to life um, before it becomes a, a book, um, I wanted to share it with my clients, my mm -hmm. community. And um, I am trying to move into the 20th century here, <laughs> 2014, um, just talking about one of the ways I've had to pivot and kind of get with the times with how I offer my services is that, um, you know, typically either I'm brought into corporations and I go in person and kind of run seminars, speak, what have you. Um, but with my individual clients, I'm usually either running in-person seminars with them in the community here in Portland or I'm doing one-on-one -on -one phone sessions with them. Mm -hmm. The way that things are going is that people, much like this show is offering, is people want to be able to download the link mm -hmm. or they want to be able to call in from where they're at. They want a, um, a, a nice price. Um, they, they don't always want to pay for like a typical coaching fee and they want to glean from you your expertise. So thus, yeah. I've created this, this pilot, which I'm launching um, starting next week. So um, it essentially is... Um, it's a four-month cycle, and so starting on uh, next week, January 7th, Tuesday, mm -hmm. it's that week is free. So people yep. can go to the website, Katie Kelly Networks, and get the link. Um, so Tuesdays at noon Pacific Standard Time, I'll be offering my first free course, and that's just an overview of these 10 critical lessons for leaders who want it all. Um, then Thursday of every week from 12 to 12.30 Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to be doing a group coaching call, just following up with any questions people have from the class, 
because um, there is some homework, real light stuff, but um, just some basic models mm -hmm. um, that people need to just kind of sketch out. Um, okay. Yeah. I love it. Did you have a question? Yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I, I love it. I'm, I'm like all for it. I'm going to tell as many people as I can about it because I think Thanks it's so like, much. it's that good. It's that good. I've, it's amazing work and I want, you know, as many people to be as exposed to it as possible. Um, Thank you. That's I guess, fantastic. can I just say a little bit about the content just so people understand? Mm -hmm. So it, there's basically three modules and it's clarity, influence, and fortune. Mm -hmm. So it's written, the content's written for men and women who were either, like you said, working in a corporate environment, running their own business, or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, and um, basically working towards becoming a more effective leader, whatever okay. that looks like in your community, home, your business. And okay. so it's working people through, what do I really want? What do I need to continue to get there? And how can I really savor and sustain my success? Great. Yeah. Fantastic. And I'm going to link up the website, this the free week, all of this stuff in the, the show notes here on the show. So if you're listening Great. on iTunes, be sure to go to the website and get the link. Um, it'll be there. Great. Amazing offer, first of all, for a, a free week. What a great opportunity to have a sneak peek into you know, this powerful program. Um, check it out. Do yourselves a favor, everyone who's listening, and check this out. All right. So um, that that's about all we have time for today. I always ask people on this show, um, as I wrap up, um, a question that's near and dear to me because I love adventure, and you know that can look like many different ways, many different things for many different people. Um, but I want to ask you, Katie, what's yeah. <laughs> what's something adventurous that's that's either transpired for the in the last couple of months or some some adventure activity that you you enjoy doing. Oh, it has to be an adventure activity. Okay, well, I told well, you at the get go that <laughs> it doesn't have. Like I said, yeah, adventure yeah. takes many forms for different yes. people. So, so, tr so truly, being a true nerdy entrepreneur, um, since my life is so focused on my business right now. For me, the biggest adventure I'm about to take is plunging into <laughs> online teaching. And I know that sounds, my husband would just roll over and die right now with how boring I sound. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, this is the craziest thing I'm up to right now. And okay. you guys can let me know how I do. <laughs> okay. That is totally legit. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. So I want to, I want to end with um, having you tell the listeners, um, like, where's the single best place to get in touch with you, to find out about you, what you offer, all that good stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm kind of crazy about Facebook. So um, you can, we have a page, Katie Kelly Networks. I just launched like last uh, couple of weeks ago. So okay. feel free to just find us there. And then you can go to the website, Katie Kelly Networks. Um, dot com and kind of Perfect. find out about what's what's up and coming. Thank okay. you so much, Michael, for this. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll have the links to your social media as well as your website um, right. in the show notes here. So great. Thank you so much for taking the time you. out of your busy, busy schedule and getting ready to launch and all of this you're putting together um, to join me here on the show and just cover some amazing, like this is free content that that sure. <laughs> is incredible that you're giving away on this show. So I appreciate that, you know, fr from you so much. I, it's It's yeah. fantastic. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Michael. Thank you yeah. for being a leader for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so for any of you that uh, are at the listening, if you enjoyed this show and this interview, please subscribe to the Startup Session show um, on the VIP email list. Just put your name in the box and uh, you'll get all of these shows delivered to your inbox every week. And also, um, these interviews are all now offered on iTunes via a podcast. So you can go to my website or go to iTunes to download uh, the, the podcast episodes there as well. So thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week on the next episode of the Startup Sessions. Take care, everybody. Bye. <laughs>